Hey guys, we got Captain Frank here. This is Dylan Hubbard from Hubbard's Marina, and we're gonna talk a little bit about hogfish today. You ready, Frank? I'm ready, let's do this. All right, so let's go into first your secret tackle for the hogfish, all right? All right. So show us what you recommend. Here we go, we got, we got two different rig setups that we use. Um, the first is the naked ball jig. This is the absolute easiest uh, way to go here. Um, a couple things we do to the naked ball jig real quick that you can to improve its uh, its lifespan is uh, a lot of guys will take the uh, the ring splitters, open this up, and change this hook out uh, to a little bit stronger hook. You don't have to, but it kind of I kind of like it. You can also take a little bit of super glue, put it right on these threads if you want to. You don't have to, but it adds to the longevity of the of the bucktail of it. So yeah, I know Christina was doing that for a long time, and it keeps that feather on a little longer. That's huh? true. That's what it, exactly what it does. And uh, again, you, once that feather's gone, I wouldn't even sweat it. Keep using the jig. You don't have to tie on another one. But and that's uh, the primary setup right there for a naked ball jig. All you got to do is tie it onto your leader. And uh, we, I, I like to uh, encourage a 30 pound leader. I think 20 is a little on the light side. You can absolutely get by with it if you know what you're doing and you can swing a hogfish without hitting that railing as you're coming in the, in the boat. But uh, a 30 pound, you know, if the hogfish doesn't mind all this chains and hooks and, and, uh, and lead like that. They're not gonna worry about 30 pound versus 20 pound. I don't believe it. All Very right. cool. Do you, uh, do you recommend a loop knot on that naked ball jig or you just tie a straight uni I, knot? Or I tie shot? a straight uh, uni knot. Well, you can do any one of them. I've seen them done uh, every which way. Um, uh, I don't like the uh, the loop knot on the next, uh, uh, the knocker rig we're gonna show you. And that's because sometimes that loop knot will get twisted up in there. But that's, you know. Six to one, half a dozen yeah, of another. That, that, yeah, that's pretty much it. So here, right. here's our other rig here. Now, let me go on to, what size beads we have here these are eight millimeter does that matter uh well i that's the size that i like okay so, eight millimeter and they gotta be red they, you know <laughs> gotta be red so, i've seen people use every different color and you know i i've seen more caught on the red ones but i see the red ones being used more so does the color matter not really sure and then uh what i'm pairing it with is the owner four aught all right, four out hooks. Yep, and some people like the three, some people like fives. I wouldn't go a whole lot uh, much smaller or bigger than that, uh, but they are the, the laser point or laser cut, and they're uh, super sharp. And uh, The ones we carry in the office. We do carry these in the office. All this stuff we carry in the office. So, yeah, the you, beads, the naked ball jigs, right. the hooks, the that's weights, right. we got it all. And here, here's the setup we use. Now, I, li I like to put four beads on there. Smokey swears on five. I see some people use three, but... Uh, I think it's just the, the, the clacking of the beads that may... Uh, the clickety-clack. The clickety-clack, maybe. And this one's a, a two ounce lead. Uh, I use anywhere from a one to a two. If it's under certain circumstances, you might have to use a three, but usually the two is gonna, uh, is gonna get you through it, so. So one to two ounce lead, even up to three if the current's running bad. That's, that's right. Four to five, maybe even six red beads. Don't go crazy. That, I, that's, I think that's too crazy, Dylan. All right, four so, red beads right. is Frank's favorite. 30 pound again, I use 30 pound uh, mono and 30 pound braid myself. So who gets credit for that rig? I know Smokey was trying to claim credit. <laughs> well, you know, Dylan, I, I I just don't honestly know how that all came about. Uh, I, As far as I know, Smokey was kind of the first person I've seen use it. Yeah. But, those red beads were on uh, some of the double hook rigs that people used to use, and we just thought, hey, what, why the heck not? And uh, he put them together. And Can you we, show that rig one more time, sure. the, the knocker rig? Yeah, we got So it. it's essentially a knocker rig uh, with four to five red beads, eight millimeter red beads, and uh, the knocker rig means the egg sinker is just free floating on the main line. So that egg sinker is unrestricted travel up and down the leader. That's what you're talking about, right? That's it, just All like right. that. Very cool. All right, so now, a, lot, a lot of people had asked, now how do you fish it? Exactly. That's probably your next question. My next question, right. how do you fish it? So it's actually quite easy. I'm gonna show you. I've got a rod over here set up, and this is the way I had it set up with three beads. Just, I think I, I was just out of beads that day. Oh. I would have gone four. You would have gone four. Yeah, but... I was running low. So, and I think I've got a, an ounce and a half on there uh, just, you know, again, it just, it just varies uh, each trip by the current. And uh, so lighter or slower currents, you use a lighter weight, heavier current, you'll use a little heavier that's weight. That's right. 
and uh, I'm using the, the 30 pound braid, 30 pound uh, leader, and uh, it's super easy. I use a 2500 Daiwa Saltis. You can get also you know, available in the I, shop. Also available in the shop. Um, we they, you can range up to 4,000. I wouldn't go a whole, whole lot heavier than the 4,000. I've seen a lot of guys bringing out those 6,000s and they get tired pretty quick. They're, it's you know it's a little heavier reel, but it's super easy to use. Just put hook that. Oh, let's let's go. Yeah, ahead, I was about to ask. Throw a shrimp on there. Yeah. I mean, you got to have a shrimp on there. Yeah. So live shrimp is the hogfish kind of preference. Hopefully, I don't embarrass myself and lose the shrimp overboard. Because <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of people doing that. Let us see how you hook that shrimp. Okay. Well, hey, you know what? For the amateurs, let's show them how to take it out of the bucket. If okay. you go, if you go in there and try to grab your shrimp like this. It's they're, they're going to click and clack all over, and they're going to shoot all around, and you're not you're going to have a hard time getting them out of there. But if you just go in there and close your hand real slow, they can't oh. move. They can't move on you. They can't right? move on you. They can't. They can't flick you now because they got that that little barb in the front. Can you see that? Yep. And then they got that one on the tail, and they'll spook you if you haven't done this uh, very often before. Super easy. I like to go in from one side of the shrimp tail right through the other. Some people like to bite the tail off. Some people like to tear it off. Some people just like to leave it like that. It's all up to you. So that's in the side. That's so a right. lot of people like going underneath the uh, bottom of the shrimp and out the top. You Some prefer, people do. You hey, prefer it from the side. I, I, do, I do it both ways, Dylan. Okay. I like underneath the shrimp and out the top personally. Okay. But that's you're saying it, it works to, both to ways. It's around. All right. Uh, super easy. I bring it right to the tip. I get more distance that way and I'm, sl I'm Swinging that lead out there. Never overhand cast. No, Always not underhand. allowed to overhand cast on this boat. It's not allowed. <laughs> Always underhand. You can slide that thing out there. Early. So, are you casting for distance? You know, I do. I do kind of uh, go for distance. But if I see hogfish coming up right next to the side of the boat, I'm surely not going to throw it out there as far as I can. I got you. Know, you. I'll drop them straight down. I let it sink all the way down to the bottom. Bring, bring my line taut, and just pull up one time. And let it and let that egg sinker sink back down and when i do that i draw in the line tight and then um i'll pull it again same thing so Real tight cast then, out let the lead hit the bottom right retrieve the slack till the line is tight so the line so you see how see it's tight my rod's even bending because I've, I've got it just taut and that's how you're going to feel that bite tight enough to feel the lead but not tight enough to that's disturb right. it on and the sometimes bottom sometimes they'll hammer it a lot of times they hammer it when you just do that lift up and bang he's on there you reel as fast as you can to get that hook set in him yeah and, uh, so cast it out let it hit bottom retrieve the slack until the line right. is tight enough to feel the lead but not disturb it lift the rod tip up let it sit then about yeah. 30 to 60 seconds lift the rod tip up again retrieve the that's slack right. keep it, repeating that process and if you're feeling it sometimes you can get get a, a couple jerks in there just to get a little attention, get those beads clicking around, yeah, and uh, that yeah, that works too. I do, you know, I, it all varies, you know. So the but, idea is to basically cast out and then kind of walk the dog, walk that lead back to the boat. That's right. And once I get pretty close, if especially if they're not catching the hogfish right next to the boat, I'll reel, I'll reel it right in, because when you're using that light of a lead. And you have a lot of people that are using rental rods with three and four ounce leads that are straight down. You don't want to get involved with the tangle with that. Yeah. So you just get it back in and do it again. Yeah, I didn't get a hogfish this time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. So same thing. Uh, I draw the lead up, up near the tip, not right on the tip. But you'll get a heck of a lot more distance that way. That's a pretty good distance, you know, for, yeah. for just having an ounce and a half lead. Same thing, let it sink to the bottom. And I'm, I'm just gonna do this one a couple times here. Oh, we almost caught a pelican. Uh, let it sit for just a, just maybe five seconds, bring it in. Let it sit, draw it tight. And I'm kind of almost pulling the rod, Not I'm not really pulling the shrimp, I'm just kind of moving it to keep it tight. Yeah. And sometimes that can be a little difficult with the swing of the boat, but you have to do it like that. Yeah. And, you know, of course, a lot of the times the hogfish are just right on it. Yeah. And you're, it, the bouncing it around as well makes not only the beads click together, but it creates that little puff of sand that, that'll that attract puff of the sand, hogs. And they are definitely a curious fish. I'd be really, uh, I'd really want to know what happens when we drop that anchor. I, I bet you a bunch of hogfish do swim to that anchor. Yeah. You know, because they seem like a really curious fish when you, uh, we send down those GoPros and they're, you know, they're all over whatever's going on. 
If yeah. there's a fish being coming up, they shoot right over to it and they're like, what's going on? So that shrimp hookup going from one side of the tail to the other, you ever use any other method or is that your go-to? No, I do the same thing as you. Sometimes I'll come up from the bottom up through the top. Oh, so um, you weren't joking. No, no, I really <laughs> do do that sometimes. And then, uh, and sometimes I do cut uh, cut the tail off. I, I do bite it off, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> and then any a lot of questions that we get from time to time is uh, the size of the shrimp. Does it matter that you don't have the biggest shrimp? No. Do you have? Do you look for a certain size? As, as, a, as a matter of fact, let me see if we have a, a dead one in there. Oh yeah, look, there happens to be a dead one in there. Yeah. So sometimes when the shrimp die, I'll cut I'll cut both of them in half just like that. You Wait, get, show he, me again. I'll just. I'll just break them right in half. Break up the dead yep. shrimp in half, and uh, and put it right on there. Just two pieces. It, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. It's not. It's not like where you're inshore fishing and you're snook fishing and you want that shrimp, you know, free swimming around. If the shrimp is dead, you can use them again. I picked them up off the deck and cast them in the water and caught a hogfish like that. It's you know? got to be fresh dead though, right? Yeah, fresh dead for sure. And once it turns pink and gets nasty, it don't work. That's right. Frozen doesn't work. Do not bring already cooked, previously cooked shrimp on the boat to catch hogfish, guys. <laughs> I've seen that happen many a times. I'm like, I've got some cocktail sauce in the fridge. Let's do the right thing. <laughs> All right, so we showed you how to hook them. We showed you the tackle. Uh, we showed you how to fish it. Now, the first question someone's going to ask when they see this video is, what about the naked ball jig? Answer is, you fish it the same way, right? Same exact way. Same exact same way. way. Cast it out, let it hit bottom. Real line, tighten up uh, the field. Not exactly the same way. Actually, now that I think about it, you are you are reeling it in the same way and doing the same jigging. But there are two hooks here, and I, and a lot of people like to put two two shrimp, one on each hook. And I see that that's a quite common thing. And uh, I would do the same thing myself. I got two hooks. Why not? Because if you miss the first one, you know I don't know if anybody's ever caught them without the shrimp on there. You know because Todd does. Who do, yeah, so oh, Todd, right? the creator of Naked Ball Jigs, he fished it next to me on that uh, fish naked trip. Is that right? Um, <laughs> and uh, he, I was using shrimp. He was not using shrimp, and he actually caught more hogfish than I did. I caught three. He caught four. Well, there you go. Uh, so you can catch them on the Naked Ball Jig without it being tipped, but All right, so most people do. It's... It so the only yeah. difference between fishing the knocker rig and fishing the naked ball jig is you would add a second shrimp because you have a second hook on the naked sure. ball jig. And that's maybe this is something you'd use maybe if you had some smaller shrimp left. You yeah. Put, you wanted to put two shrimp on, things like that. Yeah. Same way if you run out of your big shrimp, whatever, put two shrimp on there, whatever you got to do. Yeah, but it, a smaller shrimp works fine by itself. Do you have a size uh, preference? What do you yeah, consider? Yeah, I mean, if it's really small, you know, something, you know, you're talking like... The two, summertime you know, shrimp. Two, uh, yeah, this really, really small shrimp. And we usually give extra in our buckets, right? I mean, yeah. in general, when we have that those situations, and then you would use two on the hook. All right. Sounds good, man. Wait, what about the jumbo shrimp? Some people are like, I need select shrimp to catch hogfish. In my opinion, you end up catching more juvenile red grouper and other species. Yeah, the dad groupers do hit, the, hit them too, for sure. Um, so would you recommend jumbo shrimp, not recommend them? I mean, them? Uh, jumbo, uh, you know, a, a select shrimp, you know, you'll get those in your bucket. And I really don't think it matters at the end of the day. They just want the shrimp on there. I, I, I you know, caught a hogfish today and I just had three small shrimp but i hooked them on the hook it was the end of the day threw it out there and you know that's it's just a pretty typical it's the way just, the cookie crumbles yeah, i think they just uh they, they they smell it out i don't know so 30 pound braid 30 pound leader one to two ounce hook yeah this and this is a two ounce naked ball jig i know you might not be able to tell uh but that this is the any color ounce. preference on the naked ball jigs well, you know I, I just don't have one i've seen them caught on every one of them you know color and there's some people that swear day by day that the color does matter. You yeah. know, they don't catch one for the first two stops. They just weren't casting them on top of them, you know, in, in my opinion. But yeah. that's just how I feel about it. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Frank. No problem. We'll see you guys out there. And don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing. You're just too busy or the weather's bad. <laughs> see ya.